two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> oh. <sighs> too many. So there are three main benefits of a servo motor. The noise that it makes. Servo motors are quieter. The electricity that it uses. Servo motors use less electricity. And the control that you get. So the control that you get with a servo motor is much better than what you get with a clutch motor and uh, in that you can go to slower speeds and have more control when you're using a servo motor. The first one we're going to talk about is the amount of noise that the motor makes. So a servo motor make, is very quiet and it only runs when you press the pedal to run the machine. A clutch motor runs the whole time and when you're trying to talk Hopefully you understand it's a little difficult to hear me over the sound of this clutch motor. Now it's time to test the sound of the servo motor and see how it compares to the clutch motor. Now the thing you will notice is that when it's off, you can hear me very well. You don't hear any humming in the background and now it's a lot quieter. This is what people are talking about when they say it's quieter. I'd say when it's running it's not really any quieter unless you're running it at a slower speed and then obviously it will be quieter. In fact we can see that right now. So we'll run it down to about half the speed we were just at and see how that sounds. So that's a lot more reasonable as well and I'm sure you can hear me over that. But definitely when you have a servo motor, it will be quieter when it's not running. Uh, when it is running, the noise is coming from up here. So your machine actually operating is what's causing your, a lot of your no noise. Uh, very little motor noise when you're talking about a servo. Have you ever opened up your electric bill and found that that sewing machine that you've been running all month has cost you a lot of money? And we're going to find out just how much electricity you save by having a servo motor installed instead of this clutch motor. Here's the part where we have our data logger hooked up to our sewing machine uh, with the clutch motor installed. And we're going to get a baseline of how much power this thing uses. Uh, I'm going to start by just starting the machine and then I'm going to go through and sew. I'm not going to show you all the data runs. I'll just show you the data when we get to the end and we can compare it to what uh, the servo motor does so we can see does this actually save you money to have a servo motor instead of a clutch motor and here we go so when it first starts off there's a big spike in the power you're looking at watts right here and then over here you have the amps so while this machine is running not doing any sewing it's going through 161 watts and about 3.2 amps and this is on a 120 volt system and right now my voltage is 122.6 or 0.5 somewhere in there. So now that we have that data we're going to continue on and we're going to try and sew and take some data while we're sewing as well. Now we got our data logger hooked up to the servo motor so we're going to start up the servo motor and see what we get. So all we're doing right now is turning on the switch. Okay, you can see we have 2.3 watts and about 0.18 amps, so 180 milliamps, which is not much power at all because this thing is not running right now. The only thing that is going on are the electronics have turned on. Looking at the data between the two, our clutch motor start, if you look at this graph, it starts uh, the picks up at 17 amps on the graph, but I'll tell you since that, um, since it said OL, that means it was much higher than that when it first started. And then you can see it ramps down to about four amps and it's kind of steady. And then it goes down to about three, 3.3, I believe is what it was at. And that's where it stayed the entire time the, the um, clutch motor was running about 3.3 amps. 
And then when you look at the servo starting, it looks about the same shape of graph, but then when you look over at how much current, it's ridiculously low. So we were at 0 0.3 amps at the peak, going down to 0 0.18-ish amps. So we said about 180 millivolts, milliamps was what this was running at. And so 0.183 compared to 3.3, that's a huge difference. So it's running at like 1 20th of the current for that servo motor. Um, so it is saving you electricity while it's just sitting there turned on. Uh, I had the light off for both of these, so I didn't want the light to be in the circuit. Then when we look at the actually using the machine, so I had some belting that I used in order to run it through for a long period of time, long-ish period of time. When you look at these graphs here for the for the clutch motor, it went from that 3.3 amps of where it normally stays and went up and hit about four and a half, uh, 4.6 amps, and then kind of ramped down as it was going through uh, the same material for a long period of time. And it steadied out right around four amps until uh, we stopped and then it went back down to its 3.3 amps. The servo, servo, on the other hand, since it was not running before, it had to get started. So now is where you see that spike in current when it first starts. And again, this one was on overload for a portion of this, so it went much higher, but you can see we're about eight and a half or so amps is where it finally caught up to it. And then it went down to about four amps and then steadied out right around 3.5 amps, three and a half amps. So while it was steady state, just running and sewing, it was about three and a half amps, which is a slightly higher than what the clutch motor is when it's doing nothing. So we can see that both when you turn it on and leave it there, and when you're using it, the servo motor does actually use less power and it uses about a 20th the power when it's just sitting there. And then when you're using it, it uses about just a little bit less. So about, if I were to give it a percentage, I'd say about 10% less. So it's, it's operating about 90% of the current as your uh, clutch motor. So a little bit of a savings there, but your big savings is when this machine is sitting there not being used to sew. And when that motor is running on your clutch motor, it's pulling 3.3 amps that whole time. Now on to the next thing. And another benefit of having a servo motor over a clutch motor is the control that you get. Has this ever happened to you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Too many. Yeah, so the clutch motor sometimes will seem like it's either on or off. Uh, full speed or no speed. And I showed you in a previous video how you could slow down your clutch motor, but for right now, we're talking about servo motors. So now what we're gonna do with the clutch motor installed is we're going to attempt to maintain 100 RPM increments all the way from maximum speed down to as slow as we can go. And we're gonna see how well I can maintain each RPM. So we're not sewing right now, I've got no thread in the needle and we are just doing this to see how well we can maintain our speed using the foot pedal and the clutch motor. So now I'm gonna try and maintain 1600 RPM. Okay, so I'm beginning to realize that 100 RPM increments is not gonna work. So that was attempting to maintain 1600 RPM and you saw what those numbers were. Let's see if we can maintain 1200 RPM. You wanna try 1200? Let's give it a try.
Okay, not too bad, but very difficult to do. Let's try 800 RPM. Okay, not too bad. Now let's try 600. Okay, and you notice that we're going about 50 RPM up and down uh, everywhere that we try to maintain. Uh, let's see if we can get down to 400. Okay, now let's see how slow we can get it to go. All right, so the lowest we saw there was 180 and then it came to a stop. And um, one thing you can do with this machine, and this is what I showed in a video, um, an earlier video, is you can change the pulley size and then you can get down to a slower, uh, more control at slower RPMs. But just as you saw, it was very difficult for me to maintain a certain RPM. It kept hunting back and forth and the slower we got, the, the more it was hunting. The, the lower numbers, it was going up 100 or so RPM, and the higher numbers, it was going up 50 or so RPM. Now, I'm sure with some practice, I could probably get better at that, but we're here to see how well a servo motor works, so let's do it. Now we're gonna redo the RPM test, so we're gonna try various RPMs and see how well we can control our speed, and we're gonna start out going uh, full on, and this should be about 1700 RPM, uh, when this reads 2300 down here. So let's try it out. All right, so we got 1700. Let's see if we can do 1600 RPM. Okay, I found that I was able to establish uh, 100 RPM increments all the way down to about 700 and then it started getting wonky on me. And what I can do to fix that is we have this little button right here that'll change my RPM. And so I want around 700, which um, we'll try, let's try 1100 and see if that'll give us about a 700 RPM. That gives us about 800. And now we can go down. So there is much more control with this. The other thing you can do is if you want a particular RPM and all these RPMs correlate to um, stitches per minute. But if I go all the way down here so the lowest it'll let me set at is 500. Let's see what kind of RPM that is. It's about 365, somewhere in that range. I mean, you can really get it down pretty slow. Oh, about 145. About 145 is the lowest you can go. So the servo has a lot more control than the clutch motor. All right, we solved that one. Let's sum up what we talked about today. So we did testing of three different aspects of servo versus clutch motors. So the first one was the control. So c controllability. How easy is it to maintain the speed that you want to maintain? Well, we know that with a clutch motor, the only way to really change speed uh, very well is to change out the pulley on there. Otherwise, if you're trying to go to lower speeds using the foot pedal, it's not very accurate. Um, and you're also gonna burn out that clutch over time. What about the noise? So with the noise, 
we found that both the machines are loud. Imagine that. But the servo motor is silent. This one is on right now and you can't hear anything. So in between sewing, it is very quiet. When you're actually sewing, it's still loud. It may be a little bit quieter than that uh, clutch motor, but overall, both of them uh, are pretty loud and I think servo motor wins overall on the noise as well. And then we have how much power it uses. So we found that with the clutch motor, it uses a lot of power all the time. It uses about 3.3 amps just sitting there, just running that motor. And then once you start sewing, it takes more power. Also, when you start it, it, pull, it draws a lot of power. The servo motor, on the other hand, is, uh, draws very little. It sips the power. It's like 1 20th of how much power that that uh, clutch motor uses. Um, the other thing is when it, when it does start, it does have a spike, but it's a lower spike and it uses less current, so just a, a small, tiny amount less than the clutch motor when it's sewing, but it's not using a whole bunch of power the whole time. So the servo motor is definitely going to save you on your power bills in the long run. So what did we learn here today? Well, we learned that the servo motor is a much better option when you're sewing with an industrial sewing machine. There are some times where you may want the, uh, the clutch motor and that's when you need reliability. If you need that sewing machine to run at full speed for long periods of time because you're running a, a factory that's producing things, I would highly recommend you have clutch motors instead of servo motors because the servo motor has a whole box of electronics down here that any one little uh, component inside there could go bad and then you have no motor and you have nothing uh, that, can, that will work. So many more components to fail on a servo motor, as well as the pedigree of the motor itself. These are uh, not coming from well-known factories uh, that have a history of longevity. So that's something else I would be careful and leery of is the uh, longevity of the servo motor. So there are some cons when you look at the servo motor, but there's also um, a lot of really good that can come out of that servo motor. And for the amount that you pay, it's, it's a good upgrade. And make sure you watch the video I had before this where I showed you how to install a servo motor. And also, in the next video... That's right, we're gonna compare the Sailrite Workhorse, a well-known manufacturer that stands behind their products, against a no-name manufacturer who, if you wanna do a return, you gotta pay for shipping to China. So let's see who wins in the next video. Make sure you check out the merchandise we have below. This is a new thing that we're doing. We're selling some merchandise and uh, it's gonna help the channel as well as uh, you can check out our Etsy page and see what we have there available. You can get our seam rippers and support the channel. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.